what's up lazy dog fam hope everybody out there is having an awesome day today we're going to be talking about seeds i've been feeling a little under the weather the last couple days so really haven't done a whole lot of work out here in the garden and this is a video i've been wanting to do for a little while so i figured it was a good day to do it when we started this channel back in early april and as it has progressed and as we've been planting different stuff we've got a lot of people sending us messages wondering why we were planting seeds from all these different companies different online seed companies and why i wasn't still just planting seeds from my former company hoss tools and so today i want to kind of explain that and also give you a little bit of background into the vegetable seed industry from my experiences i know a lot of you have followed me over to this channel from the hoss channel and we appreciate you being here but we also have some new subscribers that not, may not know kind of my background so i want to explain that and then kind of talk about what factors should go into play when you decide where you should buy your vegetable seeds from. So in 2018, when I was working for Hoss Tools, we decided to carry vegetable seeds, start selling vegetable seed. And this was something I had wanted to do for a few years. My father did not want to get in the seed business because there are a lot of details to it that can be kind of tricky. But I finally convinced him, let's do it and as far as the seed business went for a few years there i was the one doing the purchasing i was the one deciding what varieties to carry i designed the seed packets i wrote all the descriptions on the uh, online product pages pretty much everything with the seeds with the exception of packing and shipping them i kind of had a hand on now as things progressed we got busier and busier and had to hire people to come you know help with some of that especially on the packing side but I still, uh, right up until when I left, was still the one deciding which varieties we were going to carry and that kind of thing. Now getting started in the seed industry is tough because there are a lot of big players out there, as I'm sure you know, and they've been around for quite a while. And so some of the breeders or distributors are not as willing to bring on a new client or a new company because they have relationships with all these companies that have been around for a while. So it was quite tricky for us to create these relationships and to get these breeders to trust us to carry and sell their seeds. And initially we had to work through a lot of distributors and distributors of distributors just to be able to get seeds. And as things grew and as our volumes increased, we were able to buy directly from the breeders. But it wasn't easy at all. And there were still some breeders when I left who wouldn't allow us to buy direct. We had to buy through one of their distributors and that was just because they had a very kind of old school company mentality and they thought if they added on a new direct distributor it would take away from their existing ones and it's, it's just a mess so that was kind of my experience with buying seeds for an online seed retailer learned a lot of interesting things over the few years that i did that and there were a lot of varieties that i wanted to grow that i just simply couldn't get i didn't have those relationships in place with the breeders and i just couldn't get certain varieties now because i was working for a company i obviously wasn't going to grow or make content about varieties that we didn't carry that wasn't very smart marketing so i only grew the varieties that we could get access to now that i'm not tied to a particular company i can grow a lot of these varieties that i really you know couldn't get or wouldn't grow when i was working for hoss tools so that's one of the reasons now i have access to a lot more varieties that i can grow and i'm not tied down to one specific company just doing marketing for that specific company and i can grow seeds from any seed company and try a lot of different things and share it with you guys so you know you know which varieties you might want to try which ones perform well for us and all that so now let's talk about the garden seed industry in general and kind of where your seeds come from when you buy them from a particular online retailer some of you probably know this some of you may not but when you buy seeds online, that company didn't grow those seeds for the most part. Now there are certain varieties, certain companies have that they will grow, but most of the seeds you buy online are grown by a breeder not associated with that particular company. And a lot of the seeds are grown internationally and that just has to do with cheap labor. Labor is a lot cheaper overseas. And so those seeds can be grown hybrids can be pollinated things like that are just easier and cheaper 
to do it internationally. So a lot of the garden seeds you buy are grown internationally. Some of them are grown domestically, but a lot of them are grown internationally. And because they're grown internationally, that was one of the reasons why there was a seed shortage, so to speak, when COVID really hit in 2020. So it wasn't like there was a shortage of the seeds so much. It was just uh, trouble getting the seeds over here to the U.S. There are a lot of issues with international cargo and actually getting them on container ships over here to the U.S. So then those distributors could distribute them to the online retailers. So when you buy seeds online, those seeds could have been in several different seed distributor warehouses or cargo ships by the time they got to you. I learned that there was a lot of different hands touching these seeds before they got to the end vendor. Now for some of the hybrid seed varieties out there, the real specialized ones, there's only one breeder. It's only one place those seeds could have came from. And I'm not sure how the intellectual property or the patents work on those, but there's a lot of varieties out there that can just come from one place. Now for your open pollinated seeds and some of your more common hybrids, there are several distributors within the U.S. that sell seeds or supply seeds to online retailers or mail order seed companies. So for the open pollinated or more common hybrid seeds, that does introduce some variance there as far as maybe germination or quality of seeds depending on what distributor they were purchased from. I never really ran across any bad distributors that just you know consistently had bad seed. You might get a bad lot here and there, but all of them were pretty good in my opinion. Now some seed companies online contract out their seed growing for some of their OP varieties to like small farmers and things like that. And from my experiences working with those seed companies, I'm not gonna name them, uh, I didn't get as good a germination with those over the years as I did buying from reputable distributors. But back to the hybrids that are only grown by one breeder. Let me take you around the garden and show you a couple examples of that. And then we'll talk about maybe why, even though they come from the same place, why you may see variable quality depending on where you buy these seeds from. Now for my first example, let's talk about this Yellowstone sweet corn variety right here. This is an augmented super sweet sweet corn variety that is bred by a company called Crookham Seeds and they do a great job with their sweet corn program. A lot of the really popular sweet corn varieties out there come from these guys. Now you can't buy direct from them, you have to buy obviously from one of their online distributors or mail order companies, but they have some awesome, awesome corn varieties. That robust uh, R997 or whatever popcorn we're growing comes from them as well. So regardless what online company you purchased this Yellowstone sweet corn from, it initially came from the Crookham warehouse and then was shipped to that distributor where they packaged it up in smaller packaging and then sent it out to the customer. Now another example would be these Better Boy tomatoes right here behind me that are just starting to ripen. Better Boy is only grown by one breeder and that's Seminus. Now a lot of people are really weird about growing varieties that are grown by Seminus because Seminus is owned by Monsanto and a lot of people are real anti-Monsanto, but they actually have some pretty good varieties for home gardens if you give them a chance. But if you buy Better Boy tomatoes, at some point they initially all came from the Seminus distribution facility. Another example would be this banana pepper right here, this variety called Lola, which is bred by Cicada Seeds. And Cicada makes some really, really good vegetable seeds, really good tomato varieties, really good pepper varieties, really good broccoli varieties as well. But if you buy Lola banana pepper seeds, they all initially came from Cicada. And then the last example I'll provide is this speckled hound hybrid kabocha squash here, which is bred by a company called Lark seeds and they make a lot of good hot peppers and a lot of good winter squash slash pumpkin varieties. And you can buy this from several different online retailers but it all originally came from Lark Seeds. Now one thing you got to watch out for is that some of these companies will rename certain varieties to make it look like it's something different although it's really not. There's one company that has renamed the famous jambalaya okra to gumbo okra but it's the exact same thing. Um, take the Parks Whopper series, for example. There's a lot of hybrids that these commercial seed companies sell that are just named with letters and numbers. And so, brilliant marketing. They just took one of those varieties, 
renamed it Parks Whopper and created this whole series, the Parks Whopper series. So there is a lot of renaming that goes on out there. Uh, when I was at Haas, we didn't really rename anything. So when you're selling seeds online or mail order, you're subject to federal seed regulations and state seed regulations. And every state is different. Some states are a lot tougher than other states. In the state of Georgia, we were fortunate enough that they would come germ test our seeds for free. Whereas other companies, other states had to pay like $30 per lot, I think I heard, just to get things retested every so many months. So we were fortunate enough to have free germ testing, but the downside of that is they were a lot more strict on us than other states were on other companies. Not that we wanted to rename anything, but they were really, really strict that the naming be the same as it was on the packaging that came from the distributor. So in some cases, you'll see some renaming out there. Just be weary of that and uh, know that it's probably the same thing if it sounds similar. A perfect example would be of that orange watermelon I planted over there. And I talked about this on that video. Some companies were calling it Orange Crush, some were calling it Orange Crunch, some were calling it Orange Crisp. And by the descriptions and photos and everything, it looked like exactly the same thing. So that obviously creates the question, if some of these hybrid varieties are all originally coming from the same place, or some of these OP and other hybrid varieties are coming from just a few distributors, then why, when I order seeds from one company, do they germinate so much better and if I order seeds from another company. And I think it has a lot to do with how the seeds are treated once they are to or delivered to that end vendor. You know, how do you store your seeds? Some companies do a lot better job of storing seeds than others. I've toured quite a few seed warehouses over the years and some of them do a really good job and some of them don't do as great a job. Some of them store their packed seeds in a climate control environment, some of them don't. Some of them, when they're shipping their seeds or getting their orders ready to pack, leave them in the climate controlled environment. Some of them leave them out in the hot warehouse. Some companies, I won't mention any names, will order two years worth of seed at the time. So they're really only ordering seeds every couple years. Whereas other companies will order a fresh supply every year. So there are a lot of factors that come into play on how the seeds are stored, what temperature they're stored at, how long they're stored at that temperature before they're shipped to you. All that is going to kind of determine how well those seeds eventually germinate when they get to you. But many of them originally are all coming from the same place. Now, knowing all that information I just shared, where should you buy your garden seeds from? And I'm not here to tell you you should buy them from any particular company. I'm not sponsored by any particular company and we'll grow seeds from all Kind of different places here just depending on what we're trying and wanting to grow but certain things may come into play for you certain things may be more important for you for some of you out there it's going to be price you're going to shop around and you're going to buy from the cheapest solution online or the cheapest vendor online and there's nothing wrong with that just understand that cheaper sometimes is not always better but some people will always buy based on price and contrary to buying based on price, some people will always buy based on quality. Some people are willing to pay more for seeds that seem to germinate better, seem to be a little better quality, seem to have maybe a little more vigor, seem to be more fresher. And there's nothing wrong with paying for that quality if it ends up providing dividends in your vegetable garden. Some people will choose to buy seeds based on the service or the customer service that they receive at the company from which they bought those seeds from. Maybe they like the fact that that company kind of holds their hand throughout the growing process and gives them a lot of information on how to grow those seeds. Some people find that very, very valuable and may choose a seed company based on that additional information that that company provides. And some people will buy from a particular company just based on the core values of that company. You know, what does that company stand for? Are you really behind their initiative? Maybe that company does a lot of nonprofit work. Maybe they do a lot of, you know, community gardens, stuff like that. If something like that is really important to you, you might buy seeds from a place that is involved in a lot of things like that. So when you're buying seeds for your garden, whether it be online, through the mail, or, you know, giving someone a call, ordering over the phone, 
just make sure you understand that yeah for the most part they all are kind of coming from the same place but use those other factors i talked about to determine what company you're really going to support is it price a big deal for you is quality a big deal for you is support a big deal for you or is the core values of the company a really big deal for you so i hope this video was enlightening and informational it wasn't intended to downplay any particular seed company just wanted to give you an idea of kind of how things work within the seed industry and help you understand the network of distributors that those seeds go through before they eventually end up in your hands if you have any additional questions about anything mentioned in this video put that in the comments below and i'll try my best to answer it or if you have any additional input maybe you disagree with a couple of things I said. Definitely let me know about that as well. We're all here to learn from one another. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.